Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I will be drinking the Rye Lager, the Reef Net by San Juan Brewing Company. Before I get into the review, I do want to thank everybody who has followed my channel. I'm at 67, 68 something subscribers now after a year of posting. That's really cool. Uh, I don't believe I've met most of y'all in real life, though I know I've met some of y'all in real life. Hi, Jim. Hi, uh, Paul, and uh, all my siblings and parents, and, and uh, um, oh, and uh, pepperoni pizzazz, you too. Um, anyways, for those of you who haven't, please be a dear and like and comment and subscribe. I feel weird asking, but you're supposed to promote, promote, promote. I mean, I do this as a hobby. I do this because I, I enjoy beer and because I enjoy talking about things that I enjoy and as a way to share my love of it with y'all. So really, it's kind of a, a mental exercise to remind myself I'm not doing this for the likes and for the follows, but you know, there's pluses all around. Anyways, if you haven't, hit the thumb up button and uh, click the follow button and uh, you can even hit the bell notification if you want, but I don't do notifications for my channel, so I'm not gonna tell you to do that. Um, anyways, let's uh, get into this. Eh? So this is the third San Juan beer that I have tried after the, the very nice Black Bork Porter that I had last year and then the, um, the Extra Special Bitter, the Bull Kelp Extra Special Bitter, which was quite nice as well. This is a rye lager. So I've gone over this before, but just a quick recap. Most of the American craft beer scene is focused on ales, which is one style of beer. The traditional American mass market beers are lagers. Uh, Budweiser is a lager. It is not an ale. Um, and if ales are the cold fermenting, then lager is the warm fermenting. And if ale is the warm fermenting, then lager is the cold fermenting. And I should remember all this, but I don't. So whatever. Um, <laughs> it's one thing to stuff facts into your brain. It's quite another thing to retrieve them when you need to. This is not, this is in a family of beer that has not really been neglected by the American craft beer scene, but is, say, recently being rediscovered and re-explored. Two very exciting um, outcomes. Because, I mean, the more creative and cool beers developed and discovered and rediscovered and explored, the better, right? There is no downside to that. Anyways, so this is a lager, and being noted as a rye lager, I am guessing that the rules are going to indicate it has to be mostly rye for the grain bill. Most beers, most liquors, uh, most grain liquors are made with a combination of, of grains in the malt bill. Uh, and generally, if it's a specific grain named, that will have to constitute the majority of the malt bill. So the malt bill just being the list of all the different grains that go into the malt that makes the beer. Anyway, so this is a rye lager. Let's see what it's all about. Eh? Hmm. Okay, so fields, green fields. That's a good thing. I am smelling more of those, more of the, the notes that I picked up in the gluten-free beers. The the positive notes, the verdant notes. Um, so I'm kind of detecting that recently in the, oh, there was another beer I tried recently. It had an earthiness to it. It might have been the, I'm pretty, you know, it probably was the extra special butter, the ESB also by San Juan, which is known for having a more earthy malt character or a hop character. Anyways, um, I'm guessing that is what is there. Americans, when they think of rye, they, they think of rye bread. That is the most common identifiable way that Americans drink or encounter rye. And that is darker, light-colored rye bread that is strongly seasoned with caraway. 
caraway seeds. So the dominant flavor profile that I think of and that most U.S. people think of when they think of rye is not rye itself, but it is caraway. So we do have to temper our expectations. This isn't going to taste like rye bread unless it's caraway beer, but it's not caraway beer. It is rye beer. So that's just a helpful thing to keep in mind when you're experiencing a rye beer. It's not going to taste like rye bread necessarily. But really, that's that's what I'm picking up is this um, this earthy, verdant, um, really nice, mellow lager, green kind of lager smell. Uh, green fields, farms, etc. Let's uh, go in for a drink. Mm. Ooh. Oh, there's something. Oh, okay. A couple different things here. How does this stand apart from other loggers? There is a second or third string little kick of spiciness. Um, that's kind of the middle of the tongue and then back to the throat. That is subtle but tasty. This beer has been sitting outside my fridge for probably 40 minutes now, so it's it's warmer now. Um, so the flavors are a little more, blo are blooming a bit. Typically speaking, you're gonna expect to drink a lager pretty cold. That's just generally the expectation. Um, and with when it's colder, I'm not sure if I'd pick that up, maybe. It might be maybe a, almost a rye breadiness towards the back, but it's not caraway. To make sure we're clear here. But at the outset, there are dark breads, um, strong, tasty, uh, earthy, sumptuous, but crusty dark breads. There's an earthiness that's grounded that comes throughout. And then there's this little kind of spicy uh, rye cracker kind of bite that comes the back of the throat or the, the back of the tongue and then down in the throat as you swallow. And it has an interesting drying character too. Yeah. So this is a lot more fuller bodied than I would expect typical of a lager. There's no rule that says lagers have to be weak or watery or, or light. Um, but this is a very full bodied lager. There's a lot of very... Um, strong but still well balanced flavors going on in this and it's it's really tasty it's it's very good i'm not sure if someone who isn't accustomed to lagers is going to enjoy this per se despite all the flavors working very nicely together because of that kind of that earthiness just thinking about it i'm i'm not sure if my wife would enjoy this like she would sip and she would be able to appreciate it, but given a choice, she probably would not choose this. This beer, uh, it has, I think it's mostly just the earthiness. And really, I think it goes back to those same characteristics that um, kind of led into some of the unpleasant parts on the gluten-free beer. I, I'm sorry to keep coming back to this, but that is the, the thing. There's, there's, there's steps, stops along that path that are still good, right? Before you get all the way into the, the Stockton barnyard, that was some of those gluten frees. Um, we're not getting down there. This is this is still in the good range, and and they're tasty, and there's some really tasty and and strong um, things going on here that are very enjoyable that I enjoy. And this beer is a good beer that I enjoy. This is a beer I enjoy. It's a good beer. It's a beer I enjoy too. So bonus. Um, I would eat this with, it has enough flavor to stand up to uh, really any sort of savory food. Um, I mean, heck, you drink it with, with a sandwich, uh, drink it with a roast, drink it with potatoes, it would go just fine. It would go very well, very nicely. Uh, this is a really, this is a good beer. Like, I enjoy this beer. I, I would enjoy, I do, I am enjoying this beer a lot. then I should probably stop talking about it and just get on to drinking it. Because that's what I'm going to do. Anyways, this is Matthew. I've been chewing the brew, 
enjoying San Juan Brewing, San Juan Island Brewing's ReefNet Rye Lager. A rye lager. Duh. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>